You're never guaranteed anything. You're not guaranteed. You're not guaranteed a victory. You could have a lot of great odds. You could, you could look at it going, oh, I, everything, everything's looking pretty good. And again, I mean, the, 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 the spiritual thing that comes to my mind, because it's just the thing that I'm focused on, is that church plan. Hey, everything's lining up. Everything's looking real good. That's not guaranteed. Yeah. We're planning dates. So everything seems to be moving forward. Great. Hey, that's not a guarantee at all. I mean, we could have something tomorrow, boom, pops up. It's just, wow, this isn't going to work out at all. There's a major setback, right? And look, if that happens, what are we going to do? We're not going to tuck tail and run. We're just going to say, okay, well, here we're going to try to find something else then and keep fighting, keep pushing. But it's a lot easier to be blindsided by things. First of all, if you just get lifted up and proud and haughty and Whatever it is that you do, thinking like, oh, man, everything's, you know, nothing bad could ever touch me. I'm already, I, I, I'm an old hand at this. This is all easy. This is no problem, right? You, you get blinded to reality. You get blinded to real opposition. You ought to treat everything carefully. I mean, this is a battle. He's going, he should, you know, he's going to fight a battle. You should, you should treat it as a battle. ben Hadad didn't. Well, we see in Joshua... Right after their first battle, Jericho, right? The famous battle where they didn't really have to do much of anything. They followed God's word. I mean, they followed God's command perfectly. The walls came crumbling down. They were able to go in, to, you know, just, just completely destroy the city. No problem. So they're thinking like, hey, this is, this is pretty easy. I like having God with us, right? And, and amen, all, all, all the praise, all the, the celebration, great. But then when it comes to Ai, they're already going, look at verse number one, Joshua 7. But the children of Israel committed a trespass. So this, this is the real problem, by the way. This is, this is the, 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 the source of their demise the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth Aven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. Like, well, let's not make everybody work. Let's just make some people work. No, how about we just all go work together? It's a battle. Let's go, let's, let's try to ensure victory here and, and just go, we're all here to fight anyways. Let's all go fight the battle. So there went up of the people about 3,000 men and they fled before the men of Ai. Now, that being said, they wouldn't have won with everybody going up either. Why? Because God wasn't with them. So God needs to be on your side, and God would make sure that they're not going to succeed when they're disobedient and they've got this accursed thing and they've already been in disobedience to him. Uh, and, of course, 36 men ended up dying, and um, then it becomes this, this huge turn. of the, the, Their momentum is just shifted completely against them, and they're going like, whoa, what's going on? Maybe we should have never even come into this land. We would have just been fine over there. You know, it's just kind of like, you know, they're weeping and mourning before the Lord, and, and the Lord is like, why are you just, like, there on your face? Like, get up. There's sin. Like, like this is the reason why I'm not with you. It's not, it's not because, like, I just decided, I changed my mind that I'm not, that you're not my people. I'm not going to bring you in this, this land. I already told you, you take of the accursed thing, then there's going to be a problem with that. There's going to be repercussions. So like, that's what happened. It's exactly like I said. So you got to deal with this. And of course, then they do and they're able to get the victory. But we, we don't want to get so used to victories or you see God work so mightily at one point and just think like, you know, think about this. I know for me, and I know for other people as well, especially even early on, God uses you and works in your life. Right? Like, I know, I know for me, starting to go soul winning, starting to do things, you start getting some sin out of your life, right? 
And God has used me in many different areas during times where I've still had a lot of sin in my life, but it's, you know, it's getting better. You're improving and God's still working with you. But then after you reach a certain level, you might start to think like, well, God's used me with all this other stuff. It must not be that big of a deal or something if I just indulge in this area or indulge in that way god could still use me you know it's just kind of like well look now here's the difference now you know better you were going the right direction before now if you're going to start going the wrong direction you better not have this this bad attitude of thinking that like well i could just get into any manner of sin it's not going to matter because god's already used me before i've got more things right now i'm just going to keep on serving god and he's going to be there with me well no maybe not And, and that's a dangerous place to be when you start having those types of thoughts of how to justify your sin or thinking that everything's still just going to be okay.